College Football Championship Week Preview. Championship. That sounds good, don't it? Yeah. Feels good. I mean, it's better than saying, like, Week 14. <laughs> You're I mean, like, I don't do, care. I'm do, gambling either way. Do these games matter? Uh, yeah, some of them matter a whole lot. But 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 all of them don't. No, I think all of them do to, they are to the all specific fan base. Games. They don't matter to the grand scheme of, like, football as a whole. Okay. But, like, you think this game don't matter to Northwestern? Well, I'm just saying, I mean, we, we set a system up that says every game matters, but the championship game at the end of the season doesn't for well, a I mean, lot of it, people. It matters if Ohio State gets beat. For a lot of people, it doesn't matter. Dang. We believe that if Clemson loses, they're still in, right? We believe that if Alabama loses, yeah, they're still in, I mean, right? Our, so Alabama, I think, yeah. I don't so, know about so, Clemson. So, so do these games, and then the Washington-Utah game doesn't matter at all. No, no, it matters. No, it doesn't. The winner goes to the Rose Bowl. Does, that does not matter. The, the loser Rose probably Bowl, goes to like the Bowl, Las Vegas Bowl. The Rose Bowl is just a bowl game. It does. That is not, so not even the it, case. It is the case. We, we ain't even getting into the preview yet. And we already argued. It, it is the case. No, this like college football tradition matters a lot to it a only lot matter, of these. You know what? Races. What do they call the Rose Bowl? The granddaddy of them all. It only matters because of who your damn granddaddy was. That's it. This is a. This is. This is just a country club that that certain people are invited to and others are not. I, I'm a little surprised. You are always for the little guy, and this is like the little guy's week. It's not the little guy's week. It's not. If it was the little guy's week, then when they win their championship game, they should get something for it other than we're just going to play in a different bowl game than we would normally play in. The only one that that doesn't really matter either way, Memphis UCF. I disagree. I don't think the Pac-12 matters at all. I think the winner, the Pac-12 winner, goes to the Rose Bowl. That is what, a big. We believe deal for UCF is going to play in a a New game, Six game. E- equal to the Rose Bowl, no matter what. Right? Uh, it won't be equal. It, it won't be the same. So why is it that? Time out on this preview here. <laughs> Why is it that the Big Ten and the Pac-12 winners get to play in the most prestigious bowl of them all when those two conferences are not even close to the best two conferences in football? Tradition. Why is it? Because of who their granddaddy was. Yeah. That, Tradition. It's, that's, that's why I say it's bullshit. Well, last, I think I mean, I'm completely year it was, justified in saying that. It, last year it was Georgia and Oklahoma. No, but that's because it was a part of the playoff system. Yeah, so that every, had nothing to do with what the Rose Bowl is. Every three, four years, that's 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 completely. Then other different. teams get to play in it. That's completely different to what the Rose Bowl is, though. I mean, the Sugar Bowl it, is, it is an SEC bowl. It is literally just, and it's just a bowl game. They're no different than the New Orleans Bowl that's played in that a month beforehand. Right, the the paycheck at the end of it's better, but other than that, it's it's just an exhibition game that does not matter. <laughs> Congratulations. This brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books down there. You can find more information on all six of them over at tunicatravel.com. As always, you can go check us out over at winningcureseverything.com. Our social media stuff, picks, previews, uh, everything about us, really is at winningcureseverything.com. You can also enter the football picks contest over there uh, starting on Wednesday. Go check that bad boy out. You pick 10 games against the spread. You can win some pretty amazing prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. It's good stuff. It's real good stuff. All right, let's jump into it. Game number one, college game day is there. It is the biggest game of the weekend. Probably not even close. Number one, Alabama. Number four, Georgia. Alabama is a 13.5 point favorite. What say you? How do you feel about this? There's a part of me that thinks Alabama's just going to roll, but I, I, I'd like it to be a good game. I'd I, like it to be a close game. I originally thought that it was going to be a really close game. The more I look at numbers, the more I just dig into this, I I think Alabama probably covers the spread. And obviously me being the Alabama fan, I don't want to jinx them. A couple of weeks ago, I really thought that Georgia would would beat them. I'd like to see it, but I don't I don't know that I'm gonna see it. They uh they look really good right now. 
They look really good right now. Alabama does. Um, I mean, the numbers are, are fairly comparable. Uh, I mean, just across the board, there's a few spots where Georgia is just really, really not good. Um, sacks per game, Georgia's number 102 in the country. Alabama's number five. Like, not good. Uh, opponent pass completion percentage, Georgia's number 89 in the country. Alabama's number five. You know, it's opponent yards per play. Georgia gives up 4.83. That's number 24 in the country. Alabama gives up 4.35. You know, yards per play, like, Georgia's offense can roll. Um, You know, but there's still, like, 7.46 yards per play while Alabama's 8.21. You know, like, across the board, it is, eh. Opponent red zone scoring percentage. Uh, Alabama's number three at 65.44%. Georgia's number 109 in the country at 89.27%. Um, you know, red zone scoring percentage. Georgia's at number 50. Alabama's at 24. Like, I, you know, it's just, it, it, like, there's stuff that I thought really would would make a huge difference in this game that I thought Georgia might be better than Alabama. And I, I can't I cannot find the statistics that would, would lead to a Georgia win. Now Georgia could come out and smack them in the mouth. Like Georgia can run the football really the, well. The offense needs to be we are going to eight yards of play, eight yards of play, eight yards of play, keep two on the sidelines. And then yeah. that has to be the game plan. If that's not the game plan, then their game plan is wrong. Yeah. I mean that's that is one thing that you could get in, right? Uh, rushing yards per attempt. I mean, Georgia's at 6.26 yards per attempt. Alabama's at 5.34. So, maybe. But, I mean, they're both still top 15 in the country. Yep. So, eh. I mean, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. It's just... <laughs> there's uh, There's 35 stats here. And Alabama wins 23 of them. And Georgia wins twenty or uh, sorry twelve of them, and the FBS average rank for Georgia on all of them is thirty one. The FBS average rank for Alabama is twentieth. So statistically, I don't think it's going to be close. I just I, like I I saw that line initially and was like, man, thirteen and a half really. But then I start looking at the numbers and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's under 14. It's fine. Like, okay. Well, all right. All right, so we'll move off of that. I mean, I, I'm not betting that one. Uh, are you? Is that in your game of picks? No. No? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not betting on Alabama. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, there's a chance that I probably will bet on Georgia just because I'm not afraid to lose money and I really hate Alabama, but I'm not giving it out as a pick. I'm not an idiot. It's a, there was a few years ago that, that you refused to bet on Clemson against Alabama, right? No, no, I did bet on Clemson. I was at your house. Yeah, I remember I you, were, you were still mad about Clemson winning. I was, I was mad because it literally didn't matter to you that your team lost a national championship game. That, that I thought was the shittiest thing I'd ever experienced. Your team just played in a championship game. You're like, oh, well, we'll just win it next year. It's no big deal. <laughs> I was like, this game doesn't even matter to you. This is this is this is why people hate Alabama people. Well, it's because it we had does not to, matter. Like we had won one the year before, and then we'll we ended up winning one. one. Yeah, yeah. We we came back and won uh, yeah. last year. Um, That's the only reason I was mad. I, I thought you, you, I to thought feel you pain and suffering. No, I, I won money on that thing. I won a lot of money. I, I had thought, the over I, and I had Clemson. Both teams scored fifty. Yeah. That's. You remember I had yeah. Clemson on just the spread yeah. that night. I know. So even though we lost, I still won money. <laughs> I know. That's, that's just ridiculous. That you should never prosper from. Um, da, 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 da. Let's jump into Oklahoma and Texas. Same line as it was earlier this year. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Golly. Now, did you see where the Texas AD said, no, 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 this ain't the Red River. We ain't giving you the trophy back. Like, if y'all beat us in this one, like, you just get the Big 12 championship. You ain't getting the Red River trophy back. Well, no, they shouldn't. This is not a this is not a trophy game. 
That I, well, I it was, is a trophy game. It's just a different trophy game. Just different trophy. No, yeah, they, oh, absolutely. That's if you play in one of these rivalry games where you get a trophy and you rematch for a championship. No, I, I, that that belt is not online. No, no, we we still beat you in our rivalry game, and we still have all of the accolades that come along with that. All right, so if if Alabama won twenty three out of thirty five stats against Georgia. And Georgia won 12. Okay. How many would you think that Oklahoma won compared to Texas? A lot because they're all offensive stats, right? No, no, no. I mean, it, this is stats across the board. Sacks, red zone, scoring percentage. Oh, if it's percentage, defense, I bet it's 50. Da, 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 da. It's it, 19 stats for Oklahoma, 16 for Texas. Yeah, I, I would say it's going to be a so, lot closer if they take any defensive stuff away because Oklahoma didn't win a single defensive stat on there. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, the FBS average rank – for Oklahoma on all stats was 53. For Texas, it was 56. Yep. That's the, yeah, because one of them is crazy high on offense and they're also insanely low on defense. Yeah. So that makes all the stats kind of even out to 50 50. It's a, this, some of these stats absolutely blew me away. Opponent red zone points per attempt. Oklahoma's number one twenty nine. Yeah, out of one thirty. No, out of one thirty, like yeah, they, they are they are almost DFL in they, all these defensive stats. They give up six point one nine points per red zone attempt. So basically, they but give up a touchdown every time somebody gets in the red every zone. Every time, but everybody thinks they can hang with Bama. They're Which the they're the one magical team that can beat this unstoppable beast uh, for listen, some reason. Listen to this: opponent red zone scoring percentage, Texas. Seventy one point four three percent. That's number five in the country. That's pretty good. Oklahoma gives up ninety five point five three percent. That is number one twenty nine in the country. Nice. Opponent red zone touchdown scoring percentage. Oklahoma gives up eighty six point oh three. Number one thirty. Dead last in the in the entire country. Yep. Texas is number thirty six. Fifty four point eight six. So yeah, the here's the deal, right? Texas stylistically is a bad matchup for Oklahoma. That's right. You and I were talking in the recap the other day about, you know, you you always side with the team that lost the first matchup in the rematch. I, I usually tend to side with the rematch team that lost. And we were trying to figure out, like, well, what is, what's some more recent stuff, you know, whatever. It doesn't happen often, so it's not like we have a lot of, like, but a big sample size. But it's going to happen every year in the Big 12. Yes. And it happened last year. Yes, right. right. So last year, Oklahoma beat TCU thirty-eight to twenty in the regular season, mm-hmm. and then that was that was in Norman. That's right. And then in the Big Twelve championship game, they beat them worse. Worse, yeah, forty-one to seventeen. That's right. Now, Texas, everybody looks at it. It was a three-point game, et cetera, et cetera. Texas completely turned off their offense after they got up forty-five to what twenty-four. Yeah, it was. A, they were out of hand, and Oklahoma had a pretty big comeback. Yeah, they they scored twenty one points in like the last nine minutes. Like they played prevent defense, all that kind of mess. Texas had that game in hand. I wonder what the difference will be this go round. I don't know Herman is a Herman's a good coach. Like, like well, and so point, is Todd Orlando. Like that defensive coordinator, yeah, like, it's like figured this thing out. That's, I mean, they're not a joke. Orlando's going to have his hands full. Okay, Lincoln Riley's going to have Oklahoma ready. Yeah. If there if there is a coach that is going to make sure his offense is on point for a championship game, it's going to be Lincoln Riley and this Oklahoma offense. I mean, they're they are unworldly talented at every part of the offensive football game. Yeah. I I, I just wonder if Texas makes one or two defensive stops, plays ball control offense, but scores. Every time they get the ball, because you can against Oklahoma, then then that's Texas' only way to win. Yeah, I mean it really is. It really is because Oklahoma's going. They're not settling for field goals. No, not, they're just not. not if at all. Texas starts kicking field goals at any point in time in the game, they have lost this game. Well, and the other part and then of they're going to lose is, control of the game. The other part of this is turnover margin, right? So if you think that Texas like might just give Oklahoma the game. Like that's not the case. Texas is number nineteen in the country in turnover margin. Yeah, they don't turn over. They, they, they are plus the plus point five eight. Oklahoma, slightly different story. They're yeah. number eighty at negative point one seven. They 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 play fast and loose with the ball, because the of the style of offense they play. And Texas plays very safe with the ball because of the offense they 
they run. Yeah. Yards per play, obviously that's going to be highly favored for Oklahoma. Oh, absolutely. Oklahoma number one in the country at nine yards per play. Texas 5.52. Not bad, not not great, not anything. It's just like right dead middle. But if you're trying to beat a team like Oklahoma, that's what you want. You don't want nine yards of play. No, you want five yards you of play. You want five yards of play. Yeah. And you, you want to kill them with a thousand paper cuts. That is the way it goes. Because you want those boys on the sidelines. You want Lincoln Riley with his hands on his hips waiting to call plays. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. This game is at 11 a.m. like every other freaking Oklahoma-Texas game. I know. I, I just can't understand why they have any games at 11. Like, this is – at 11 is when they should play all these makeup games that, that nobody cares about. Like, Well, that they, they did. But yeah, but this game should not be one of them. Like, none of the championship games should start at 11. So They should all start at 2.30 or later. East Carolina NC State is at 11. Yeah, Marshall, West Virginia, or Marshall, Virginia Tech is at 11. Correct. That, uh, that's fine. Drake, Iowa State. Akron, South Carolina. Louisiana Lafayette, Appalachian State yep. is a championship game, but that's at 11. That's fine. And then they've got UAB, Middle Tennessee at 12.30. Uh, Norfolk State, Liberty at 1. Stanford, Cal at 2. And then they clear the schedule for the SEC championship game yeah. at 3 o'clock. And then once that one's done, then we can get back to business. And we've got uh, the, the Fresno. The Pac-12 and the A&M. Well, the I Pac-12 mean, the is on ACC. Friday. Oh, the yeah, Pac-12 Pac is on Friday. They do it the day um, before. That's right. So Fresno at Boise is at 645. Clemson-Pittsburgh at 7. Northwestern Ohio State at 7. So, yeah, I mean, is what it is. Um, Texas, like going back to this, stylistically just a nightmare for Oklahoma. Texas is 6-0 and in their last six matchups against the spread. They've won three of them outright. So, it ain't just a given that Oklahoma's going to run away with this thing. Nope. Uh, let's move on. Game number three, Memphis against UCF. UCF a three-and-a-half point favorite. I think that line opened at like six-and-a-half. Right. I, I saw it at three this morning. Oh, is it all the way down to three yeah. now? Yeah. I think, I think the McKenzie injury has completely changed. Well, nobody knows what to expect with UCF. I mean, they are the complete anomaly – New guy could come in, play great, and they not miss a beat, or he I'll could just new fall guy, over himself. New guy last week, like, had South Florida been able to stop the run at all? Could have won. Well, and maybe, maybe not won. won, because they were already down right. they were quite a bit. pretty far. Um, but absolutely, had they been able to stop the run, they might have been all right. New guy we was should, 5 out of 14. We should know what that guy's name. We can't call him new guy. That's, that's complete. It's, yeah, go ahead and, go ahead and find that. I apologize. Um, it's on me, because I'm the defender of them. <laughs> <laughs> Should have known that. I, I'm very upset about the McKenzie injury. Uh, total offense, UCF is number five in the country, and Memphis is at number six. Total defense, UCF is at number 77. Memphis is number 66. Uh, turnover margin, UCF number two in the country at plus 1.45 per game. Memphis is 51 at plus .17. So, you know, a lot of these, they look like the same team. Like, they just, they, they look... The exact same. Uh, the only difference being uh, d -d 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 opponent rushing yards per attempt. UCF is number 79 in the country, giving up 4.47 yards per attempt. Memphis is number three in the country at running the football, 6.41%. I think that Memphis, like this will be in my gambling picks. And I, I think it would have been the same whether McKenzie Milton played or not. Memphis in the trenches is better than UCF, at least this year. I don't think they were last year, but this year they are really good. What's uh, what's the guy's Darryl name? Daryl Mack. Daryl Mack Jr. Okay. Daryl Mack is the new Shouldn't quarterback. Be. We'll see what happens. Now, I'll, I'll tell you this. Against Memphis's defense, he will be able to run the football. Oh, yeah. Now, Memphis is going to let you run the ball. Um, He will be able to get out in open space and make plays, Look, but he's not going to be able to beat you – with his arm, I don't think. Talking about talking about Memphis, is Henderson a legit Dope Walker contender? Can he win that thing? I think he could. I mean, I really do. Because this hasn't been the year where, like, a running back has taken the country by storm. Well, I mean, who, who are you going to give it to? Like a 7-5 and five, uh, Jonathan Taylor? I mean, that's what I'm or, saying. Like, or who's who's the other guy that uh, – Like, we were we were thinking before the season started, like – a running back will emerge from Wisconsin because that always happens. Bryce well, Jonathan Love. Taylor's great. Yeah, no, no, it's great, but he's he, you know, but they're seven to five. They're seven to five, and like they haven't looked great. I mean, he he has like, put up some really big numbers against some really bad teams. He's good. 
but like we thought Bryce Love was going to be a superstar before the season started because he, he was injured and he's just yeah he can't get healthy he can't look right like a couple of guys have looked really good in spots I mean Henderson's looked unbelievable all season the, the, it, the, it would be big for Memphis to get a dope Walker winner let's see I just want to look up Jonathan Taylor is there any way that all right, Jonathan, Georgia's guys are going to like like cannibalize each other right like you, oh you yeah, can't yeah they're, they're not you they're not in give that it one. To, okay um jonathan taylor snell you think snell might have a chance to take it away from him i mean he's had no. more big tv games it no but he's also had some really bad games yeah but it doesn't matter but i mean this is he's in a power five i don't think team. he's there's there's three guys and everybody in the country loves to crap on the american conference i mean that's just it they they so i don't know that they're I think ever going to give a jonathan taylor would probably win it but I think that Daryl Henderson has a legit chance. Uh, Jonathan I think Taylor, too. 280 rushes for 1,989 yards. He averages 7.1 yards every time he touches it, and he had 15 touchdowns. Um, I mean, that's that's tough that's, to beat. That's strong. That is really strong. It is. Yeah, it is super, super strong. Um, so, Daryl Henderson, let's jump into I know what he did. Talk, but they, this guy is special, and we haven't talked about him enough. Oh, he's he's great. He is absolutely great, but let's let's talk about Daryl Henderson. Uh, last week he was twenty four carries for one hundred seventy eight yards. Oh no, yeah, he's, uh, he's been awesome all year. This year, one hundred ninety eight carries, one thousand six hundred ninety nine yards, averaged eight point six yards every time he touched it, and he had nineteen touchdowns. So more touchdowns, less touches, m- and more, more yards, yards per touch. More yards per touch, and 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 a little less on yardage. On yards. Now he didn't play against the Michigans. He didn't play against like the the Iowa's, like your bigger, badder, bully defenses. But eh, I think he's got a legit shot, and I think he could really do special things for Memphis. Let's see who are the Doak Walker finalists. Da, da, da. I would I would venture to say it's those two guys and Snell, right? I don't think it's Snell. You don't think Snell is a finalist? I mean, even if they're not going to give it to him, that dude has been special this year. His his overall numbers might not be those two guys' numbers, but he's been pretty special this, this year. Let's see. Doak Walker finalists are a man alive. This is Riveting unbelievable. Radio. Why do they not do this easier? Uh, there's Lou Gro- uh Yeah. Lou Man. Groza, Ray but, Guy, Maxwell, Davey O'Brien. Like, I thought this was going to be easy to pull up. Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne, Daryl Henderson, and Jonathan Taylor. Those are the three finalists. Okay. You think Etienne could win it? I mean, the ACC is is maybe worse than I w- – No, I wouldn't do I wouldn't give it to him. I think it's between Jonathan Taylor and, and Daryl Henderson, and I think they might give it to Daryl Henderson just because, hey, this is this is cool. These, these guys are special. I yeah. mean, they're doing something in Memphis that they've never done before. So, you know what's crazy? Daryl Henderson actually averaged 8.9 yards per carry last year. He just didn't get near the touches. No. Uh, let's move on from Memphis Sorry. UCF. Game number four, Ohio State minus 14.5 against Northwestern. Uh, this is one that, again, you know, you, you think, eh, like Oklahoma won three more stats than – Texas. Then Texas. Northwestern and Oklahoma, they tied in two of them. And, or sorry, yeah, Ohio State and Northwestern, they tied on two of them. Ohio State is better in three more stats than Northwestern. It doesn't surprise me. Their defense is better than Ohio State's. I, 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 know, I, I have, I like Northwestern. We're, we're, we're in with those guys. I'm in the tank with them. I've lost a lot of money betting on Northwestern this year. I know my boys from from West Lot want me to stay away from this game. I can't. I can't do it. I, I think. I think they can hang. I think they can hang. I think they might could win the game. That's a fourteen and a half point line. I think Ohio State blew their wad in that Michigan game. That was I think they did. all. That was all uh, emotion and rage and and desperation of just we're gonna. Kill this team. We're gonna play way outside of our head. You wanna you wanna hear something interesting? First off, Ohio State averages 
almost 200 more yards per game than Northwestern. Oh, that doesn't offense. surprise me at all. But but check this out: red zone scoring percentage. They're down there with Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, red. This is not on defense. I'm talking like oh, offense. Offense. Oh, no, red yeah, zone scoring yeah. percentage. Ohio State is number 118 yeah. in the country at 76.6 percent. Northwestern 78 at 82.58 percent. Are you talking about on offense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's offense. Okay, I thought you were on defense, defense. It's it's all Northwestern. Yeah, I was just Northwestern so much better, so much better on defense. Yep. Um, this is one of those games that that screams like I like Pat Fitzgerald. I like that they've known they were going to be in this game for two or three weeks, and Ohio and he, State and he's found been playing out. backups and That's they're right. still winning. Ohio State found out two days ago they were going to be in this game. Yeah, I like that Northwestern fans have had opportunities to buy up all the hotel rooms and all the tickets for three weeks straight, and Ohio State just realized they were going to be there. Yeah. I think a lot of Ohio State fans didn't know. If That's they it. Would. No, no, not like you could just assume you win that game. And let's buy them early. Let's, uh, let's move on to the last one, Washington minus six at Utah. Another one of those weird games. Washington's favored by six. They won earlier in the year, 21-7. to seven. At Utah, but that was early. That was when Utah was still on the uh, the schneid. And then Utah got rolling. Utah's been rolling. I, I will tell you. Utah is better in 18 stats compared to 17 stats for Washington. That shocks me a little bit. I really like Chris Peterson. I mean, I, I have no idea how he started the season off as weird and wonky as he did and and got them completely out of contention. I know that game against Auburn just could have went either way. It was just a weird game. And then they lost to Cal 12 to 10 and yeah. benched uh, uh, Jake Browning Chris, for a little bit. They lost on a last second field goal Chris, to Oregon. Chris Peterson is a top five coach in college football. I mean, yeah, he's, give it that. he's really, really good. Um, but that that is to take nothing away from Kyle Whittingham, who no. I think is still a really, really good coach. I like Utah a lot. If I had to lean one way or another, um, I would I would lean towards Chris Peterson because I have a hard time just betting against him. Yeah, I know that goes against my revenge theory guy, but I really thought about taking Washington in this game, and then I started thinking about it because I'm like. Yeah, Utah's starting quarterback and running back have been out. And, yeah. No. You know, they didn't look great against BYU, but I think they might have just, I mean. They figured it out. They figured they it out late. great early. Um, Got to play yeah. all 60 so I, minutes, though, man. I think I might stay away from this one. It's in my game one pick. There you go. All right, let's go through honorable mention. Fresno at Boise. Boise, a three-point favorite at home. This is the Mountain West Championship game. Boise on that blue turf. Yeah, tough else, to man. beat, man. They are tough to beat. Fresno, uh realistically numbers wise should be favored they should have been the first time well they were the first time what but they but they lost was boise a home dog i thought that was a pick no game. boise was a home dog oh, by, by, by three i remember picking boise and i remember winning yep and they won yep um but, but they were pick. a home dog they were a home dog in that one um this one should be interesting fresno's got the revenge factor but boise at home they are playing lights out right God, now tough man they're tough Pitt at Clint or well Pitt versus Clemson. It's in yeah, Charlotte. It's at Charlotte, uh, That's right. which will probably be all Clemson fans anyway. Uh, Clemson twenty six and a half point favorite. Clemson is like one in six when favored by twenty one points or more this year. They keep giving them big numbers though. I don't feel good about Pitt. Oh, like, you think Pitt's gonna get washed? I think they might. Because, well, look it, like. They run if, the football so well, I just feel like they can make it a lower-scoring game and, and kill the clock. If they don't think they can win, just don't get embarrassed. I just don't know that they'll be able to run the ball. Uh, well, maybe not. I don't know. Because, like, Clemson is really good against the run, and if Pitt can't run the ball, they no, are no, in some no. serious if, trouble. If Pitt can't run the ball, this game is going to be a, a massacre. I mean, Clemson's, like, number two in the country against the run. Well, yeah, but that's because they play a bunch of teams that can't run the ball. I don't know, man. It, it, this line worries right? me. I, I thought about taking Pitt in this one, too. I was like, ah, well, I better stay I'll, away from that. I'm going to do it. Now, of course, come game time, I'll probably be like, eh, what the hell? I may as well. Uh, Stanford minus two and a half at Cal. This one's in my gambling picks. This one's in my gambling picks as well. It is, uh, it's in Berkeley. 
Stanford been on a little bit of a roll here lately. Cal has also looked uh, pretty good. This is a good matchup. This is a good game to have on championship uh, Saturday. Yeah, this is a good game to have on championship so, Saturday. What, what what do they call this one? The big game or the it, the game is Michigan Ohio State. Yeah, I don't. I don't. This has a this has a name like that. I think which, it's like the big game. I don't know. So, but it's it's a rivalry. I I like it being this weekend. It's good. I mean, yeah. If, normally you can't because what if one of these teams is playing a championship game? But yeah. I'm Once okay they both found out they weren't going to be in it, they yeah. moved it on over. Let's play this uh, And finally, last one, UAB at MTSU. Rematch from last week. Rematch. Uh, Middle Tennessee, three-point favorites at home. They beat them up last week. They beat them 27-3, to three, but look, Bill Clark held everything back in that game because it did not matter. He's going to be ready for this one. Yeah, I think he will be. He did not show them a thing because it did not matter if they won last I, week. I get, I get sucked into these things because, you you know, I, I, I'm – I'm in the tank with some of these guys, and I'm just not gonna. I'm just not gonna get out. I'm just gonna ride them forever. So you just all in on on Bill Clark. I'm just gonna keep going, and it doesn't matter where he goes or what he does. I just follow him. I like him, and I I think he's an unbelievable man. I think he's an incredible coach. And well, and he's and great against the spread. Yeah, I've made a lot of money. Man. I think that's part of the reason why you get in the tank with these guys. <laughs> yeah, well, some of these guys I've lost a lot of money on. Well, this year Pat, Fuente did not help you out. No, Fuente has killed me. Pat Fitzgerald killed me. Money wise, but well, you just got to know the right way to bet Fitzgerald. Well, right? when you like, bet him all the time and he only wins half of them, you, well, you, but that, that's you the thing you don't you don't bet him as a favorite. Eh, well. You can't bet him as a favorite. You only bet him as a dog. If you only bet him as a dog, you won money. If you're in the tank with him, you're in the tank. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> all right, that is our college football championship week preview show. We gave you the information you need to be a winner. Go down to Tunica, put your, put some action down on your favorite plays. Go to tunicatravel.com to figure out which sports book you want to go to. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Enter in the football picks contest. Pick 10 games against the spread. You can win some awesome prizes. As always, hit that subscribe button to help us out. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong, what you think is going to happen. Right down there in the comments. Go check out the gambling picks video.